Welcome back to the summit, everyone. I have got a fantastic guest here today who's going to be talking all about everything to do with influencer marketing from the aspect of being a store owner, but not only a store owner of one store. We have a very special guest who is a store owner of four stores. And on top of that, he's actually really a marketing expert all across the board because he is actually the owner of a podcast. He's a host of a podcast, Ecom Crew. So if you haven't heard of that, then get out there and listen to it on iTunes. He does amazing stuff on his podcast. So this is someone who's across all aspects of marketing when it comes to e-commerce. So I'm really excited to have Mike on the line today. We've got Mike Jackness and he is going to be talking everything about his brands from the point of view of influencer marketing. And I know he's got a lot of great things that he wants to share with us. And I'm going to ask him some really deep diving questions as well. So let's get straight into it. Hi, Mike. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm so glad to have you here. When I reached out to you and asked you to come on the show after you were on my podcast, I was so glad when you said yes, because having four different brands you have, especially with influencer marketing, you can give us a really good perspective from many different angles because I know that every one of your brands is so different and unique that you have different requirements for everything that you do when it comes to influencer marketing. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we really only do influencer marketing for three of the brands because one of the brands isn't really conducive to influencer marketing, but the other three we, we do. And I'm excited to kind of talk about how we've gone from where we were when we first started doing influencer marketing, which was a complete fail to where we are now. Fantastic. That's what I'm really excited about. Um, tell us a little bit about the actual brands. If people don't know what you're actually doing, let's talk about the four brands and which ones yeah. you're doing influencer marketing with. Sure. So the, uh, I'll just kind of do them in order of when they started. Uh, the first one was icewraps.com, which is like hot and cold therapy for different parts of your body. That's the one brand that we don't do influencer marketing for. It's more of a commodity product. It's a you know a ice pack you throw in the freezer, it gets cold. Something that you're probably not going to uh, do influencer marketing for. It's not really conducive for that. Uh, the next brand we started was Color It, which is uh, coloring products geared towards adults. So coloring books and pencils, gel pens, markers, etc., something that works really, really well with influencer marketing, obviously. Uh, the next one is Wild Baby, which is a baby brand of clothing and toys. Uh, can't think of something that is better to do influencer marketing for than that. Uh, and the last brand, we, uh, we own tactical.com, which is a blog and info site, and we have an e-commerce brand around that uh, that also does well uh, with influencer marketing because these are the types of things that people are on YouTube and uh, you're looking at reviews and other things about that. And as you mentioned, we blog and podcast about the whole journey along the way at ecomcrew.com. Fantastic. And as of right now, understands that you do have those four very unique brands. So I think people that are on this summit and seeing different aspects, especially from the influencers, a lot of the influencers that we have are sort of the females. We've got one of the males um, on the summit as well, but a lot of them are females. So I think that talking about tactical.com would be a really good one today as well. So I know we'll go into details on all three, but tactical, especially because I think that people don't realize how much they can do with sort of, a, I guess, more of a male brand rather than a female brand. Yeah. And I mean, I, I can relate, obviously, being a guy uh, that has spent a lot of time on YouTube looking at affiliate or a uh, influencer marketing myself to make my own buying decisions because I do backpacking and hiking and stuff like that. And it's a great way to look at different backpacks and tents and sleeping bags and those types of things. So it's something that I definitely uh, have a personal connection to as well. Fantastic. So what, before we get into all of those things, what is your opinion of influencer marketing overall in general at the moment, how it stands? I think that you can have success with it if done right. Uh, and we'll talk about exactly what that is. But as I mentioned, I kind of alluded to this before we've been doing this now for, for several years. When we first started, I got like a really bad taste in my mouth and kind of gave up on influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that if you're doing it right, at least with our experience, the way that we've been doing it, we've had a lot of recent success with it. And I think that it's here to stay. I think that businesses that are going to be legitimate brands uh, in the future are going to need to figure out ways to, to integrate this into their business because you know the, the stats of like the amount of hours of video that are being added to YouTube every day are incredible. That number keeps on going up. I don't really see an end in sight for that in the, in the immediate future. Uh, technology changes quickly, obviously, but uh, I, I see that's something that's going to be persistent for, for the foreseeable future. 
No, that's interesting. I don't know if it was someone in the summit. There's been 18 different guests that I've spoken to in a very short period of time. So I'm trying to remember someone or I heard it somewhere else saying that they don't believe that YouTube is going to be around for that much longer, that pretty much YouTube's going to shut down. And I thought that was a well, unusual <laughs> thing. Yeah. I mean, everyone obviously video. is entitled to their, I love it. I'm going to go back and watch that video. I'm curious, uh, to, to see why that might be, why they might yeah, be. Yeah, and I can't remember if it was on the summit or it's just something I heard over the last few days. So I'm just, if I think about it later, I'll let you know which one it is if it's on my summit. Um, but I find it strange because video is what's taking over the internet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I my opinion, I mean, obviously, every, you know, uh, everyone has their own opinion. But again, I just look at the stats. I mean, the num the amount of hours of video every year being added to YouTube has been increasing significantly year over year. Uh, I mean, think of how you use YouTube in your own life. I mean, like YouTube is like the most amazing resource to find an answer to anything. Like I, I, I just installed a instant hot water heater in my house and I was like watching a YouTube video about like uh, how to connect the thing properly because the instructions are really bad. You know, someone else has already made that video or you might want to learn how to play a, a song on the guitar is another thing I'll like watch on YouTube and, uh, how to do something in Amazon or whatever. You can like watch something on YouTube about that. And I just don't see that going away. And I think that there, there's always going to be people that, that have influence, that have channels with uh, a large number of viewers. And if they're in your niche and, and, and it aligns perfectly with your brand, that's what I'll talk about the things that we've had success with. I just don't see that going away. Like, I mean, I just, I, you know, I've gotten things wrong before, obviously, but I mean, I just, I, I can't see a situation where that like disappears overnight or gets supplanted with something else because I mean, the general, in general, people are getting dumber and dumber. They don't like to read and like watching a video is like such an easy cop out. And most people lean towards doing that for so many things. You know, it isn't just, uh, you know, it's maybe ways to get your news or just to like watch other people that are, uh, living their life like a Kardashian type thing or something, but there's just there's so many there's so much opportunity to do more and more video. I I just can't see how that's how that's going anywhere. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I just wanted to bring that up because um I'd heard that. Um, can we start by talking about just generally how much of your marketing budget goes into influencer marketing in general for each of your brands? Yeah, and um, how do you um what's the return on that? Just generally, we don't have to get too much into numbers, just percentages would be really good. Yeah. So as I kind of alluded to, we did things differently in the beginning, but now influencer marketing is like a fraction of a percent of our budget. The, the way that we do it is, is very on the cheap and it's incredibly effective. Um, and I don't know like when you want to get into the details of all that, but yeah, I mean, we are not spending a lot of money. In fact, we very rarely pay the influencer anything. It's typically giving them product. Um, but in very rare circumstances will we actually send an influencer money as a part of the, the deal. Do you find that because of the types of products that you have that they're very, uh, it's like when I spoke with Chase on the other interview, it's about telling a story and your brands are very much very story driven. Do you find that that's got something to do with it? If you think about other brands out there um, selling certain things that they don't have that sort of brand and the story behind it, do you think that really helps you or is there something else? It, it's a little something else. It, it's so what we, what we've done, like, let me kind of get into like, the, the whole story here of like what we're doing now uh, so we can kind of pull this all together for you. Basically, you know, let's use coloring just as an example. When we first started doing influencer marketing, we would go on like on Famebit and, and put up color as, you know, in these products that we wanted people to review. And the people that were coming to us, the influencers that were coming to us with, with packages were like all over the map, but like none of them were, actually into coloring. The channels weren't about coloring.